Hi, first graders. This is Mrs. Miller with another social studies lesson. Today in lesson four, we will be talking about the rules we follow and why we have to follow rules. Just why is it so important for us to follow rules? What do you think? Think about that for a second. That's what we'll be talking about today. At Harley Avenue, we say our Harley promise every day. Let's say it together right now. At Harley Avenue Primary School, we are safe, polite, helpful, kind, respectful, and responsible. Well, let's talk about what our Harley promise really means. What does it mean to be safe? What are some examples of things that we do that are safe? Can you try to name three things that help us to stay safe? Name them across your fingers. Ready, set, go. Okay, did you come up with three? Here are the three that I came up with. I said cleaning up after yourself and not leaving anything on the floor that somebody could trip over. Pushing your chair in when you get up so again, nobody trips over your chair. And I also said listening to your teacher because your teacher's job is to keep you safe. So you always want to follow your teacher's directions. Now, what about polite? How can we be polite? Can you think of, can you think of two ways to be polite? Go ahead, name them across your fingers, name them across two fingers. Ready, set, go. All right, I'll tell you the two that I came up with. I was thinking use words like please and thank you. And I was also thinking wait your turn, right? Like we wouldn't want to cut in line. We would want to wait our turn. It's not polite to cut in line. Now, what about helpful? How can we be helpful? Can you think of one example of how you can be helpful? Think of it right now. And I want you to say it out loud. Ready, set, go. All right, eyes on me. So I'll tell you my one example. I was thinking we can be helpful by helping our friends to clean up and our teacher to clean up. And how about or if we're at home, we can help our parents to clean up, right? Now, what about being kind? How can we be kind? Think of two ways that you can be kind. Ready, set, go. Tell them across your fingers. All right, I'll tell you the two that I came up with. One is to always use kind words and never say anything that is hurtful. And another thing I thought of is to always include other people and never leave others out. Now, what about this word respectful? What does it mean to be respectful? Think of one way that you can be respectful. And go ahead and say that one way out loud. Okay. 
Okay, I was thinking of so many ways that we could be respectful, right? Respect, being respectful kind of goes along with being polite. But I was thinking to be respectful, we always want to listen to what others say. So if somebody's talking to us, we want to be looking at them and listening and thinking about what they're saying. If somebody's talking to us and we're just looking at the ceiling or looking down at the floor, that's not being very respectful listeners. And last but not least, responsible. Think of one way that you can be responsible. Go ahead, say it out loud. All right, I'll tell you what I was thinking. I was thinking I can be responsible by making sure to get all of my work done. So when we say our Harley promise, we want to remind ourselves of the types of things that we can do to follow the Harley promise. Let's read it one more time and let's really read it with meaning now, ready? Raise your right hand as we read this. We're making a promise. At Harley Avenue Primary School, we are safe, polite, helpful, kind, respectful, and responsible. Excellent job, everyone. So in our last lesson, we talked about how we have local leaders, state leaders, and national leaders, like our president, right? He leads our whole country. Well, in Elwood School District, we have school leaders, and school leaders help to make and enforce rules. They help to make sure that everybody's following the rules because our school leaders want us to be safe, they want us to do our best learning, and they want us to build relationships, right? Remember those three R's that we learned? Let's see if you remember them. What are the three R's? Name them across your fingers. Let's say we'll name them together to be respectful, responsible, and build relationships. Yes, those are the three R's. So our school leaders want to help to make sure that we follow those three R's. And who are our school leaders? Well, you all know our school principal, Mrs. Milan. She is the leader of Harley Avenue. And you probably have seen Dr. Bossert, our superintendent. He is the leader of our whole entire school district. So that's Harley, Boyd, Harley Avenue Primary School, Boyd Intermediate School, Elwood Middle School, and John Glenn High School. He's in charge of all four schools. Boy, does he have a big job. So I know you're probably thinking when it comes to following rules, you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal if I don't follow a rule? I'm just one person. Well, that's what this boy in this story thinks. So we're going to see what happens if rules are not followed within this story. Let's listen to What If Everybody Did That. It's written by Ellen Javernick and illustrated by Colleen M. Madden. What If Everybody Did That by Ellen Javernick. When we went to the zoo, I fed just a little of my popcorn to the bear. The zookeeper waved his broom and said, What if everybody did that? I just wanted to see how fast the grocery cart would go. It went faster than I expected. 
When the manager stopped me, she said, "What if everybody did that?" So as we read this story, I want you to pay very close attention to the illustrations because on one side we see this boy breaking some rules, but on the other side we see the consequences of what would happen if everybody broke that rule. Let's keep watching. On the way to visit Grandma and Grandpa in Kansas, I dropped just one soda can out the window. The patrolman who pulled us over said, "What if everybody did that?" At Uncle William's wedding, I took just a little lick. Of the frosting from the fancy cake, the lady behind the table glared at me over her glasses and said, "What if everybody did that?" I told the babysitter that I took a bath just once a year. As she shooed me into the bathroom, she said. What if everybody did that? During story time, I had something important to say. I just couldn't wait till the end of the story. The librarian put her finger to her lips and said, "What if everybody did that?" I want to just pause here for just a second. And take a look at this illustration here, because I know that sometimes that happens during a lesson or during story time. We might think, "Oh, I just have something that I want to say. I just, I just want to say it so bad," and it's hard for us to wait. But let's think about what happens if everybody calls out when they have something to say. Take a look here. This is sort of funny. <laughs> Look, this boy is saying, "I gotta go potty." Why can't we read one of those other books? I've already heard this one. My mom said that recycling is a very good thing. I'm so hungry. Zzz, I guess she fell asleep. <laughs> How much do you weigh? I can touch my toes. See. <laughs> so, if everybody called out, do you think anyone would be able to listen to the story? Would they be able to hear it? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Yeah, I bet your thumbs are down. If everybody calls out, nobody gets to hear the story. While we sat in the car waiting for Dad, I honked the horn. I just honked a few times, but Mr. Thompson came to his door. He shook his head and said, "What if everybody did that?" At the swimming pool, I just splashed a little. The lifeguard blew his whistle and said, "What if everybody did that?" On the bus, I just stood up to see the fire truck. Mr. Gearshift glared at me in the rear view mirror and said, "What if everybody did that?" Just once, I didn't hang my coat on the rack at school. Miss Sanders made me pick it up and said, "What if everybody did that?" Oh my goodness! Look at this! What a mess! Right? Has your teacher ever told you make sure to hang up your coat? Right? And you might have thought, "Oh, what's the big deal if I don't hang up my coat?" But if everybody didn't hang up their coat, look at this mess that we would have. And do you think that anybody would be able to find their jacket or their backpack? Probably not. Let's keep listening. At re.
says, I threw just one snowball at Sammy. Mr. Walters saw me when he sent me to stand by the wall. He said, "What if everybody did that?" When we went out for dinner, I just shot one straw wrapper. The waitress stopped taking out orders and looked straight at me. She said. What if everybody did that? After the football game, I just ran on the field to get the quarterback's autograph. The official waved his arms and said, "What if everybody did that?" When I came home, I gave my mom a hug. What if everybody did that? Everybody should. Oh, so that was a nice ending to this story. Hugging is one thing with our family. That is a nice thing to do. But I bet this story got you thinking about what might happen if we all didn't follow the rules. So now we're going to take a look. At some other rules that we might have, and we're going to think about why it's important for us to follow them. Okay, so we already talked about our class rules. Now, if you are learning from home, you have some virtual class rules in your class constitution. And most of them are the same as our in-school rules, so I'll just read them quickly. Number one, for students who are learning from home, it's be on time and ready for class. Listen to our teacher and our classmates. Use kind words. Always try our best. And for the students who are learning in school in the school building, your class constitution was. Be safe. Listen to our teacher and our classmates. Use kind words and always try our best. Can you think right now about why it's important that we follow all of these rules? Think about what would happen if everybody broke the rules. Okay, and I want you to tell somebody next to you what might happen. Ready, set, turn, and talk. Okay, eyes up here. Now we have classroom rules, but we also have rules outside of the classroom. Outside of the classroom, like for example, we have rules for when we eat in the cafeteria or when it when it's lunchtime. Sometimes it's lunchtime. We sometimes we eat in our classrooms. If you're at home, you're probably eating at your. Your maybe your kitchen table or your dining room table, but wherever you're eating, what are some rules that we must follow? Hmm. Let's take a look. All right. So let's see. So here are some rules that we must follow when we eat. The first one is place your trash in the garbage.、And、the second one is sit. Facing the table with your feet on the floor. Two very important rules for when we eat. So right now, I want you to think: Why is it important that we follow those rules? What would happen if everybody broke those rules? When I say go, I want you to share what you're thinking with someone near you. If you're at home, you can share with. Somebody in your house, or even just your imaginary friend. If you're in school, you can share with somebody who is sitting next to you. Going to set the timer for 15 seconds. Go ahead and turn and talk. Ready, set, go.
All right, time is up. So I wonder if you were thinking what I was thinking. I was thinking it's really important to place your trash in the garbage so that there's not a mess left behind. If one person leaves a mess behind, it's still not a good thing. But if everybody left a mess behind, oh my goodness, what a mess we would have. And our custodians or our parents would have to clean up after us. And that wouldn't be very fair. Maybe we would have a consequence. Maybe we would have to, maybe we would have to give up some of our playtime to go back and clean up. Now, what about sit facing the table with your feet on the floor? Why is that rule important? Well, that rule helps to keep us safe. If we are not facing in, if our feet are not on the floor, somebody could trip over us and they could get hurt. What about in the bathroom? Whether you're going to school at home or in school, you probably have rules that you need to follow in the bathroom. What are some rules for the bathroom? Think. So here are some rules for the bathroom. Number one, you always wash your hands after using the bathroom. If you're using the bathroom in school, you need to keep your mask on. And the last one, kids always giggle about this one, but it sure is important. You always want to make sure to flush the toilet. Why are these rules important and what would happen if everybody broke them? Turn and tell the person next to you. Ready, set, go. All right, time is up. So here's what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, we need to wash our hands to keep ourselves clean and safe and to keep others clean and safe. After we use the bathroom, our hands are dirty. And so if we don't wash them, anything that we touch, we spread our germs to. We don't want to spread our germs, so we make sure to wash our hands. And we wear a mask also so that we don't spread germs to others and so that others don't spread germs to us. This is especially important while we're in the bathroom because it is a small space. Now, flush the toilet. This is the one, like I said, that everybody laughs at. But think about what would happen if everybody didn't flush the toilet. Oh my goodness, that's not a bathroom that I would want to use. That would be a very dirty and smelly bathroom. Yuck. Now, what are some rules we must follow in the hallway? If you're in school, there are certain rules that we follow in the hallway. And if you are at home, I bet that there are some important rules that you follow while walking through your house. They might be different than the ones in school, but they're just as important. Okay, so let's see. One rule is that we walk in a quiet, straight line. Another rule, again, is that we wear a mask. And another rule is to keep your hands at your sides when walking. So now think, why are these rules important? And what happens if everybody breaks them? I'll set the timer. I want you to turn and talk. Ready, set, go.
Okay. Hmm. While you were talking, I was thinking about these three rules. And notice how it says walk. It doesn't say run in a quiet, straight line. Now, if you're at home, you probably don't have to walk in line, but I'm sure that your parents do not want you running through the house, right? If we run through our house or if we run in the hallway, we could, we could get hurt and people around us could get hurt. People could bump into us and get hurt. Now it says a quiet straight line. Well, let's see. If we're noisy in the hallway, and everyone is noisy, people won't be able to concentrate. And if we're noisy at home, right? And everybody's noisy at home, what happens to our brother or our sister who's trying to concentrate and do their work? And it says walk in a quiet straight line. Well, if we're in school walking in the hallway, if we're not in a straight line and nobody's walking in a straight line, then we'll take up the whole hallway and nobody will be able to pass by us. Now, we wear a mask in school, of course, again, to keep our germs from spreading and to keep us from, ca from catching any germs from anyone else. So this is very important in the hallway because lots of people might be walking through the hallway at the same time. And last but not least, keep your hands at your sides when walking. So while we're walking in the hallways, if we are touching things on the wall and everybody touches things on the wall, those things will end up being damaged. And teachers and students they put so much hard work into the things that are hanging on, on, the, on the walls that we wouldn't want to ruin them. And if you're at home, if you're touching everything that you walk by, you're probably leaving fingerprints on everything, and then that would have to be cleaned up. So at home too, we don't want to be touching things on the walls while we're walking through our home. Okay, now we have an activity sheet to complete. If you're at home, you'll find this activity sheet in your Google Classroom, and if you're in school, your teacher will hand it to you. You know what I always say, the first thing I do is always the same. I pick up my pencil and write down my name. Okay, so this sheet says grade one, social studies lesson four, the rules we follow. The directions say, name one rule that you have in school. Draw a picture to go with your sentence. So let me think of one rule that we have in school. Hmm. We just talked about a whole bunch of them. So, I am going to write about, let's see, I'm going to write, throw your trash in the garbage. Throw your trash in the garbage. Period. Let me reread and check for my beginning capital and ending punctuation. Yes, I have beginning capital, ending punctuation. I want to make sure all the words I meant to write are there. Throw your trash in the garbage. Yes, I wrote them all. Then I would draw my picture. I would draw a picture of myself throwing my trash in the garbage. And let me see what this part says. It says, what would happen if everyone broke that rule? Oh my goodness, what would happen if everyone broke that rule? Well, we would have a big, huge mess, right? So I'm going to write that. We would have a big mess. We would have 
a big mess. Nobody likes a mess. Okay, again, I'll check for my beginning capital, ending punctuation, and make sure all the words that I want to write are there. We would have a big mess. Yes. Okay, great. And then maybe I could draw a picture of what it would look like if nobody followed that rule and nobody threw out their trash. I could draw garbage everywhere. What a mess that would be. Oh my goodness. Thank you all for learning with me today. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.